Okay, so here is part 15B of my Funk Andre's Genre Profile on vinyl. Now, as you know, we're starting in 1977 here. We left off in 1976 with Cerrone on the last album. Uh, now, a lot of you may already know from my Earth, Wind & Fire artist profile on CD that I've already got this album on CD, so why on earth would I ever need it on vinyl? Again, Dr. Records helped me out with this one. This is the gatefold, so I'm going to show it to you on vinyl. It's in superb shape. And there's an inside. Earth, Wind & Fire always had fantastic album artwork. The reason I got it is because of the presence of this. I'm going to try to fold it out in little ways. But it's an Earth, Wind & Fire poster. It's a huge poster. There's Andrew Woolfolk. There's Verdine White, the fire of Earth, Wind & Fire. There's Ralph Johnson. There's Louis Satterfield, Louis Satterfield. The Phoenix Horns, late Don Myrick. And the late Maurice White, RIP. He's got his kalimba in his hand, I believe, or a little red book. There's Fred White. There's Philip Bailey, looking very gentlemanly. Also looking gentlemanly up there is, um, this is terrible. I forget his name now. This is Earth, Wind, and Fire. I shouldn't be forgetting their names. And, uh, there's the whole band up there. There's Larry Dunn. And there's Al McKay over in the corner. And it says Earth, Wind, and Fire in the middle. In deep appreciation to our many universal brothers and sisters, we dedicate our music to you. Thanking you, thanking you for bringing us into your homes and hoping our songs will enlighten and bring you much joy. Maurice White. Johnny Graham is his name. Now I had a problem with this poster before. It's really difficult to fold up. So I'm not really going to try. I'll do that a little later. That's why I haven't taken it out too much. It's a huge poster. It's all in all. Little Feet, Time Loves a Hero. I have this on CD as well. My boyfriend Scott gave this to me as a double from his collection. Produced by Ten Templeton. Another one of those quote-unquote rock albums that's actually more or less a funk album, like a jazz funk album. Let's get a lyric sheet. I think it's the last album they did with Lowell George before he died, actually. Sea Wind Horns. Uh, Jerry Hayes Band. Uh, Jerry Hay, as you know, became the right-hand man of Quincy Jones and the early Michael Jackson solo albums. I had a 1980 album of theirs produced by George Duke. This is an album on CTI from 1977 called Window of a Child. There's the band right there. There's Jerry. Kind of a nice glossy lyric sheet. I don't need to show you the CTI label. Norman Connors, drummer, producer, creator of Romantic Ballads, Romantic Journey, also 1977, on the Buddha label that I have already showed you. Ask Rufus. I had this on a really uh, terrible condition vinyl I got in Boston and got it on CD and uh, my boyfriend got this for me on vinyl again from Dr. Records. Uh, the reason I got this on vinyl again was because of course it has the vinyl gatefold the little Rufus Lip logo in the corner but this album has something my other copy did not have similar to all in all this has the Ask Rufus poster there's the member of the Ru there's the members of Rufus There's Shaka Khan. I'm sorry there's a lot of glares. It's a hard poster to open up and close. Not as hard as the all in all one, which I still have to deal with after this video, but, you know, that's where that's at. Steve Kahn, Tightrope. 
Steve Kahn was one of the great session men. I've heard people say that, you know, I don't like session men that much when they make their own records, but Larry Carlton and these guys, they really knew how to do it. There's Steve. Great 70s jazz funk album, 1977. Uh, John Clemmer, uh... He's a, one of the softer guys, kind of like Grover Washington. This is his album, Arabesque, from 1978. But he's still part of that soul funk kind of world. I'm just trying to look and see if there's a unique label on it. It's just a regular ABC label. And guess what? We're back to Rufus again, Street Player. I had this on CD, actually, but the cover uh, is missing for the moment. And this is also a gatefold. This is the album that actually, I believe the only one they did that has Richard Moon Calhoun on drums. It was after Andre Fisher was ejected from the band and before John Robinson was there. You got Tony Maiden, Facebook friend of mine, Shaka, Bobby Watson, another Facebook friend of mine. How you doing, Bobby? Kevin Murphy and Hawk, David Hawk Walensky. I believe this is also his first official album with the band. There's the back of it. But there's more to this record. No posters per se. But a goodie booklet. A huge goodie booklet. There's promo information on Rufus. And even better than that, there are promo photos of Rufus. There's one with John Robinson from their camouflage album. There's one from, it looks like, 1981 or 83, when Shaka wasn't in the band anymore. And here's them, it looks like, during the Master Jam period. And there's another photo in here. Street Player. If you get promo photos, photos, if you don't have that, you don't have anything. Remember, those mean something, so... I get this from a place called Record Connection. tend to have albums of these goodies inside them. Cheryl Lynn, her self-titled album, the big hit was Gotta Be Real. And when I first listened to this album, it reminded me of how many teen groups, or teen artists of that time, she was on the Gong Show, actually got a lot of the best people, the best musicians, the best producers, making sure her album was consistent. So, I mean, if you like Gotta Be Real, and even ballads that sound like that up-tempo song, you will love this album. They really put a lot of work into Cheryl Lynn's debut, and she was very talented. Still is. Back to Crusader's world again. We all have a star. Wilton Felder's 1977 solo record. Just an ABC record again. Really happy to find that. Earth, Wind, and Fire again. We have doubles on them just like Rufus. My boyfriend Scott gave me a double of this as well. I am. Some of my favorite inner artwork. It was their first album with David Foster. After the Love is Gone, and Boogie Wonderland, and my favorite, In the Stone, is on this album. Atlantic Star. This is their debut album from 1979. Uh, this actually has their first hit, Stand Up, on it. The intro to it has a great synthesizer on it, and there's a commercial on YouTube. Uh, where Michael Jackson, in the same period, does a promo for this. Actually, you know what? I think I may have gotten that wrong. This album is from 1978, actually. I got that a little out of order, but that's no big deal. This is their 1978 debut, and uh, he was dancing to this. And Henrique and I had this conversation that, wow, if Stand Up made Michael Jackson want to dance, it's one major song for sure. And uh, look that up. Uh, Michael Jackson does a radio... Uh, promo in 1978 on YouTube. I don't know the exact name of the station offhand, but it'll have him dancing to the intro of the song on it, kind of looped for a radio station. But this is a really great early funk album from Atlantic Star. They became known more for ballads later, but anyway. You remember them from the last video? Johnny Lee and Jerry Brown, Chaser. This is their 1979 album. Bought that the same day. Love the cover art, though. Columbia Records. The Emotions Come Into Our World, on ARC Columbia, also 1979. I haven't listened to this album all the way through its 
You know, it's a, it has a certain style to it that was a little bit repetitive, even for the disco era. I, I kind of preferred Rejoice to it a little bit. Disco does not have to be repetitive. Uh, I have to listen to that a little more. This, the emotions are so great. There's likely some really good stuff on that. Eddie Henders Ed Henderson, run into your love. He's got this platinum flugelhorn there. Also from 1979. Brand X. Product. This is a very intense sounding album. Still has Phil Collins in the lineup. Still on Passport Records. You saw that label on the last one. And here's Cheryl Lynn's 1979 album, In Love. This album is, is good. It's not as strong as her first one, but still a really good record from Cheryl Lynn. Second album, or sophomore record. Living Inside Your Love. Uh, this has the up-tempo version of LTD's Love Ballad on it. And it's also a gatefold. There's George Benson sitting there. Either sad or contemplative, I can't tell. I believe Ronnie Foster played on this album. Uh, he contributed a song he had done on a solo album of his called Nassau Day. Which is a great song for him and a great song for George Benson too. My boyfriend Scott gave me a double of that as well. So, there are, there's my completed second part of my funk, Andre's genre profile, uh, part two of volume 15, I guess you could say, of this video series. And I'm sure once I get some more stuff together, there will be a volume 16 coming up soon. I get a lot of funk, jazz funk, soul funk, disco funk, disco disco, all that sort of stuff. So stay tuned for it. And I hope you enjoyed this double volume set of videos on my funk vinyl. Peace.